I had a lot of comments on the coil that I bent and some of the comments suggested for me to anneal the copper before I bend it. British copper pipe is annealed to R220 temper. Don't quote me on that, I think it is. And it's annealed to that temper so that you can bend it and it still retains its form and its tensile strength. If you anneal it any further, it's not going to hold its shape. And 10 to 1, it's going to collapse on itself when you try and cold bend it. But to prove the point, I've got a piece of copper here, which I'm going to anneal. It's only 15 mil. I don't see the reason for doing the 22 mil. But I'm going to further anneal that piece of copper. And then we'll try and bend it on the monument pipe benders. Then we'll try and bend a standard piece of pipe, exactly the same size, which I did not anneal. And let's compare the differences. Now I've got the GT3 torch from RTKs with a really wide burner. And I think that's gonna do the job of annealing that piece of copper pipe. So the process of annealing copper is basically you heat it up to cherry red and you let it cool down. Now you can see how the copper's changed. So it's got a black skin of carbon round it and that will just flake off. That's like a little powder that's on the copper. But when that cools down, that will then be annealed to a different temper. That copper is now extremely soft. And the only way that you change the hardness on that copper is by working the copper, i.e. bending it and twisting it or hammering it, and that will tighten those molecules. But as it stands, that's now a very soft piece of copper. And when it cools down, we'll see how that performs in the pipe benders. So the reason that that copper has been tempered to that specific hardness is so it's manuable enough to be bent, but also strong enough for it not to lose its form when you bend it. So that's a standard piece of copper that I've not tried to alter the temper at all. And when you bend it, it performs how we would want it to perform for plumbing conditions. It gives you a nice uniform bend. You will notice that every time you bend a piece of copper pipe to a 90 degree, that inner radius is tightening up and you're stretching that outer radius. So that outer radius is always gonna have a flattish edge on it. As much as people will want to say it doesn't, it actually does. It does slightly squash the pipe like that. And that's a natural process from cold bending. But let's try the piece that I have annealed further. Now that's a piece I annealed further and you can see there's a visual difference on it because it's got all that dust on it, right? And if you actually sand it, it just flakes off. So we'll just sand this a little bit so you can get an idea. It's just like dirt that sticks to it. It's a process of annealing the copper and probably also some soot from the gas. But, Let's see how that performs on the benders. Now, that is so easy to bend, seriously. That's like, I've put in hardly no force on that whatsoever, right? But as you can see, it's collapsed on itself. And the reason it does that is because the copper is so soft that when you're bending, the outside forces are trying to stretch it out and the inside forces are trying to compress and as much as you got a guide on the outside and a former on the inside that's structurally holding that bend or structurally 
forming that into that 90 degree bend. The inside of this pipe is hollow and because it's so soft, it's actually caving into that hollow. So yes, if you anneal the copper further, it will make it easier to bend. But unfortunately, it won't always hold its form. It will distort. So when you call bending copper tube, don't try to anneal it any further because it just doesn't work. And if you like to see videos like this, then consider subscribing, like the video, leave us a comment down below, and I'll see you on the next one.